All right. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Brooke Green. I'm the transportation planner for ACHD, and I'm going to be the one um, working with all of you guys through this whole process from start to finish. And so uh, my contact information, just as a heads up, is going to be put into the chat several times throughout tonight's meeting. But before I get started, I always like to look for affirmation that I, you can hear me. So if you're there, can you just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Looking for people. All right, I got a couple hands waved. All right, that is confirmation that you can hear me. So I'll go ahead and get started out of respect for everybody's time. It is 5.30 and I just wanna give you a heads up really quick. We are recording this meeting, so um, just be aware. We're recording it because it also enables us to be able to go back and reflect on what everybody was saying. Also, before I get into the meat of today's conversation, I wanna go over a couple organizational pieces. Um, before we go any further, I need you guys all to log on to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I dot com, and use the code 52534053. It's all there in the chat. It's to your right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just pause for one minute. I want to make sure you all have enough time to actually log on. Menti is a way in which you guys are going to communicate back to us um, and participate through the dialogue. So again, look to the link in the chat box, log on there, click on it, and use the code to get access. In the meantime, I'm going to turn off my video and give you guys one minute to make that happen. Again, that menti.com is located there in the chat box to your right. Sarah, I'm seeing a message. No problem. Hey guys, just as a recap for all of those who are joining into us a little late, um, a little after 530, I want to get you up to speed before we go further. The menti, and you'll see the link there to your right in the chat box. Log on there and fill out the information and get plugged in. That is going to be the software we use as we go through tonight's meeting. What it does is it allows me to uh, ask the questions and you guys to engage back with me. So I'll give you a few more seconds as we get that wrapped up. And uh, we're going to be reposting it throughout tonight's meeting because we recognize um, some people might be filtering in a little bit later, and that's totally fine. So we just want to make sure you can participate with us. So I'm going to mute for just one quick moment, and then I'm going to plug back in, and we're going to start this meeting. All right, I think we've got everybody plugged in. And if not, like I mentioned, you can jump into Menti at any time throughout this process and participate. But I'd like to go ahead and just get started um, just to give you a quick background and to give you some um, sideboards on how we're going to be working through tonight's open house. It's a virtual, clearly. Uh, we aren't going to be having an in-person open house naturally because of some of the constraints that we're all dealing with. But I wanna talk a little bit before we go any further, just kind of what you can expect and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the history and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the schedule. So what you can expect tonight is we're going to walk through a series of slides, questions, and I'm going to ask you to engage back. It's so important if you guys can go ahead and engage with us. One, it's because it allows us to capture what you're saying, but it also allows your neighbors to capture what you're saying and to hear from you. This is such a great opportunity where you guys can engage with one another and get an idea of how the neighborhood feels about this project moving forward. Um, just give you some additional information. My contact information, my phone number, as well as my email will be posted several times throughout this process. So write those down because I would be more than happy to chat with you if you have any outstanding questions. 
So really quick, it's a couple of things. Let's talk about the schedule. So this came up in our earlier meeting. Our schedule for this project is we anticipate going through this process, having these very, uh, quite often engagements with the public, and then taking ideas that through our dialogue, um, come back to you in September, go through those, and if at all possible, look to an adoption either January or next spring. But here's something important to note. We will, that schedule is flexible based off of what we hear from you. So we're not gonna take anything to an adoption until we get it right. And so your engagement and participation is so important. Also, I wanna just kind of, kind of deal with the elephant in the room. You guys, we hear it, we know. We were back here in 2011. We've gone down this path before. But we're, th things are a little bit different this time. We're coming back to Collister not with any preconceived notion of what your street should look like. When we came out in 2011, we came out with the notion that we were going to install sidewalks. We're coming back out here in 2021 to have the discussion of what is your community and what does it look like and what is the goal and the vision that you have. And our goal is to walk you guys through that process. And we want to find out what is important to you, what can we do to enhance Collister Drive for all modes of traffic, all modes. That includes traffic, volumes, that includes speeds, that includes dealing with the vehicles, it includes parking, but also includes bikes, and it also includes pedestrians. So tonight, we're gonna take you through these survey questions. We're gonna ask you to participate and engage with us, but more importantly, we're going to ask you to tell us what your vision, your goal is for your street, because as I mentioned, we're not coming to you to tell you what we're going to do to your street. We want you to help us identify what's important, what's important for your families, what's important for your neighborhood, and how we can enhance Collister for everyone. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move to slide two. Something important, SurveyMonkey, it's going in the link. Guys, take note of this, click on it at the end of today's meeting. This is the only way in which we're going to be able to capture your, comp uh, your information. So your emails, your phone numbers, um, this is how we're gonna communicate to you. So we need you to fill out that survey monkey at the end of today's meeting so we can stay and continue to be in touch with you as we go through this. Let's go to the next slide. All right, um, I highlighted this earlier. Really guys, I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to help you guys navigate this space, help you navigate these meetings, but more importantly, help you come together as a neighborhood to help us identify what you want your street to look like. Um, as I said, we're not coming out here to tell you what we're gonna do to your street. We're coming out here to engage with you to find out what your street looks like, what your vision is and what your goals are. And I'm gonna ask you those questions throughout this meeting. I'm gonna ask you, are there areas you wanna see improvement? Are there things you don't wanna see? I'm gonna ask you, what are your goals? What are your visions? So your participation is so very important. Go ahead and go to the next slide. All right, quick question, and it sounds like somebody already jumped on here. So how do you use Collister Drive? Is, do you bike, do you walk? Are you a resident? We wanna hear from the residents. Guys, if you're online, tell us that. Um, do you take the bus? Do you own your own business? Do you walk to school? We know there are several attractors along Collister. You have got the foothills to the north, and you have got the Greenbelt to the south. And so we want to hear from you, how do you use Collister and how do you get about? Uh, about? Give you a second. Um, we've got two participants. Let's see if that number can increase. Okay, it looks like as though you guys are getting plugged in. Guys, this is also the first question we get to see how things are working. So your participation is so important. It allows us to make sure that everything's running right. All right, I've got several of you who are biking along Collister, several of you who are residents. Thank you guys so much. Um, for engaging. We've got several of you who actually go to the library, several of you who take the bus. Um, you know, when we have this meeting at 3.30, we heard recreation access is important. Well, it looks as though that stands for you guys as well. Um, Sarah, you have a question by resident. Do you mean residents are in the street or in the neighborhood? Um, in this situation, when we ask for resident, we're asking, do you live on Collister? All right, biking. Recreation, residence, okay. Um, several of you guys drive your kids to school and to home. Fabulous. A um, couple things as we're starting to look to the chat box, I am going to constantly be referring back to the chat box. 
chat box. So should you be putting something in there and you have a question? A um, couple things. If it's a question, I'm not going to answer that to the end uh, unless I can look to it specifically for the slide we're on. If it's a statement, that's fine. You guys certainly can have that dialogue amongst yourself. That's also really important here. But just use that chat box. And if it's relevant to the slide we're on, I'll answer the question. But if it's a question as it pertains to the whole process, guys, I'm going to hit that up at the end of tonight's meeting. So can we go ahead and move to the next slide? What do you like about Collister Drive? So throw it out there. What is it important? Um, is it the fact that you're able to walk comfortably down it? Can you bike down it? Are the trees important? Tell us what you enjoy and you like about your street. <coughs> All right, guys, if, uh, waiting for the, is everything working fine? All right, here we go. Access to recreation and business. That's what you enjoy about the street. See if anybody else has anything to add. It's our connection to the neighborhood resources, library, coffee. You know, you do have a lot of attractors on that street. It connects to town and nature. And we love going for your walks. I like the houses being so spread out. I love how there's large driveways to give me buffer between the street and my house. Parks. I was born and raised on this street and now I own my own home. I love this neighborhood. Thank you and thank you for sharing a little bit of a history with us. Access to business and foothills, the beautiful trees. We heard a lot about the value and um, the appreciation for the large tree canopy in the neighborhood. Anything else you guys want to add in there? We'll give it a few more moments. Enjoy the access to the foothills. Enjoy my family coming over functions. Large lots and lots of trees. Multi-generational residents. Well, and that was highlighted earlier with those who are already born and raised and live there. So there's a lot of history to this street. The traffic is a concern. Keeps neighborhood like to go from 36 Garden Street to Library to the Greenbelt or foothills on your bike. So we know that traversing through this space on your bike is important. You love bumping into your neighbors while out on a walk and biking. More stuff about the trees. Fabulous. Well, it's just kind of rotating through some already existing questions. So I'm going to take this moment, um, highlight. Kristen, I'm hearing from you. Not the not much that I love about Hall Street, but love our neighbors. I find it to be un unfriendly to pedestrians. So thank you guys for highlighting that. And, Guys, I want to encourage you as much as you put that in the chat. I also want you to stick that into the uh, into the menti as well. The chat's important because it allows us to also engage with you. So I'm going to encourage you guys both to communicate in both ways. All right, I think we've captured lots of your feedback. Let's go on to the next question. Do you think Hollister Drive needs improvement? Guys, this is a yes or no question. It ends. I will be following up in the next slides with more details. So here's an opportunity, just yes or no, do you believe that Collister needs improvement? All right, 75% saying yes, 22% saying no. Candy, you wanted to highlight that you do believe that needs improvement. Thanks for throwing that in the chat box. 70% yes, 30% of you guys is it no. And it's shifting. So we've got 73% yes, 27% of you are saying no. Okay, well, we'll go ahead. Um, we've captured this and now we're going to move into kind of more detail. I want to hear a little bit more detail about some of your guys' comments. I'm noticing we've got about 13 participants. So if there's more than 13 people on here, guys, I want to encourage you, if you haven't logged on to Menti yet, we'll repost that information so you can actually log on if you just joined us a little late. Um, that is the tool in which we're using. Diana, you're saying no improvement. You'd like to leave it where it's at. So thank you for your feedback. If you think calls or drive needs improvement, tell us for what type of user. Do you think the motorist, pedestrian, cyclist, or other? Um, do you think that it needs to be more focused on the motorist, more focused on pedestrians, more focused on the cyclist? And hey, for that, for those folks who are jumping in there to talk about other, can you throw it in the chat box what you mean by other? About four of you guys have said that other is important and you need it. Love to get some definition on what that looks like. So I got nine of you guys who are participating in this 10 of you. So you guys are all getting plugged in a little bit. 
Again, to the left in the chat box, you guys will see the Menti. This is the link for you guys to participate in this outreach effort, um, menti.com. And we're going to throw in the user um, access code here in a moment. So we've got others still sitting out there at four. Does somebody want to elaborate what other is in the chat box? We've got 11 of you guys who think we need to make some improvements for pedestrians. Several of you guys highlighted motorists. There are blind corners for some residents and excessive speeding. Thank you, Tom. I really do appreciate that. Others is for residents, safety for having kids in front yard on Hollister. Fabulous. Thank you, Jeremiah. Others, scooters and wheelchairs. Yes, ADA access. That was highlighted earlier. Thank you so much. Diana, Collister is on a truck route. There's been room for all. Thank you for calling that out. Second blind spots and family safety is important. Okay. Kids playing in the driveway. Thank you, Stacy. All right, guys, we're going to jump in. I think we've got several of you guys who participated in this. I'm going to continue to go back and forth between the slide and the chat box. Um, Tom, I'm hearing right away is not being maintained near the street or the intersection. Thank you for calling that out. Let's go ahead and jump on to the next slide. Do you think Collister Drive needs to be improved the entire distance between State Street and Hill Drive or only at certain locations? This again is the entire distance or only at specific locations. And just so you're aware, I'm going to have some follow-up questions about specifics. Peter, you had uh, several comments in there and I'm going to read through them really quick. Um, having participated in the online meeting and hearing people's concerns seems it boils down to a few things. And we'll just kind of leave that there. I'm hearing a little bit turning left onto State Street and Collister is a nightmare. Thank you, Deb. Looks like we've got several of you guys, 57% are saying the entire distance, 43% actually called out a few specific locations. Um, people don't want the character neighborhood specific Collister to change. Thank you. That is uh, what we're hearing, a drag strip with flanking sidewalks and bike lanes is not what everyone wants. Adding those will certainly cause, I'm actually reading this at the same time. So, hey, uh, Peter, this is a pretty lengthy comment. So I'm gonna leave that there and kind of uh, revert my attention back to this, but your comment is in there. I appreciate it uh, for everybody else to see. We'll also capture that. And I wanna encourage you to get in touch with me as well. And we will funnel some of those questions of that statement or comment into our overall data as we go forward. So we've about 16 of you guys participating in from in a nutshell, it looks as though 56% of you guys want the entire distance and 44% have specified locations. Well guys, that's so important because we're gonna move into the next slide. I'm gonna start asking for more detail. So if you can please go ahead and use that pin and drop it on those locations that you think calls or drive needs more attention. So this is a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time to complete this task. But this is also an opportunity I wanna talk about the boundaries of the project. The line reflects the boundaries and the area which we're staying within as we move forward. We're only looking at Collister from State Street to Hill Road. We're not going any further north than Hill Road. We're not going any further south um, than State Street. And so just be aware that that is the boundaries for our project. And that's what we're going to be exploring as we move this project forward through the duration of this concept. Okay, it sounds that we've got two of you guys that have kind of drawn your attention to one location. And in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to give me some more details. But in the meantime, I'm gonna highlight some of your guys' chats. So we've got several things, folks. Uh, baby carriages, scooters, wheelchairs, electric bicycles. Candy, that was your comment. Let's see, a uh, light turn on State Street takes forever. I'd say that entire street is more children need to be able to safely walk. All right, can we zoom in on the map? I'm unable to do that. Um, we'll give you a few more moments, you guys, to work through this. And I also want to take this chance to also highlight tomorrow we will be making a live survey available on our landing page. That's why it's so important that you guys fill out that survey monkey so we can capture your information because we're going to invite you guys to go back to that online uh, landing page tomorrow and invite you back again to participate. So if we weren't able to capture everything through this conversation tonight, you're going to have one more chance to do it again tomorrow. 
So looking right now at the dots and where they're appearing, it looks as though several of you guys have highlighted several different locations. In the meantime, in the moment, I'm gonna switch on over to the next slide. Sarah, it's really hard to see my answers will not be precise. That's okay, Sarah. We're gonna have another chance to actually capture a lot of your concerns um, through several different means tonight. Please tell us the location you pinned and why you chose it. So Sarah, here's a chance for you to kind of elaborate why you identified that location and give us a little bit more detail. What about that location all of you guys identified that is of concern and you want us to pay a little bit more attention to? Uh, Esther, sounds like we need a, a pedestrian crossing from the west side of Colister to the east side between Hill Road and Catalpa Drive. Thank you for that input. For the south of Catalpa, sidewalks would be huge for many children, not only on the street, but also from apartments nearby. It could be help wildlife travel through the foothills down over into the canal. So I'm going to take a chance to go ahead and highlight what you guys have put forward. John's Landing is difficult to enter onto Collister. North of Bloom, there's narrow, sharrow, uh, narrow shoulders. Hey, Rachel, if you were to add sidewalks, would you need to cut into the driveways of current home worker, homeowners? Uh, Rachel, I'm gonna answer that at the end when we do the open dialogue of conversation, because um, it's, it's not necessarily specific to the slide, but I recognize that it is a concern that several of you have. Again, please tell us the location you pinned and why you chose it. Um, somebody mentioned there is no dedicated bike or pedestrian pathway, sidewalks are not continuous. Shoulder parking pushes pedestrians and cyclists into traffic. Thank you for highlighting that. Three-way stop at John's Landing with bull belts for visibility to accommodate pedestrians in the low-stress bike ramp route reduces the speed by design. Thank you. I couldn't place the pin, but if I could say, it would be at the intersection with John Landing. It'd be a good place to calm the traffic. Thank you so much for bringing that out. Kristen, I see your comment over here. Blind spots along the side streets connecting are difficult as well as cars parked on the main street. Thanks for calling that out. We've got a comment about the two bus stops. It's the bottom of the hill, so cars are going quite quickly through there. It's got a challenging intersection. Catopo, but I'm concerned with the lack of sidewalks and bike lanes between Hill and State. Um, somebody highlighted, for me, it's not just one specific location, it's the entire route from John's Landing to Straight Street. The traffic is dangerous and it needs traffic calming. There's little to slow traffic from Catulpa to Hill. Much of the foot and bike traffic occurs. Oop, that one got away from me. I'll get back to that. Um, safe place to cross at Bloom and John's Landing. Lower the speed limit to 25. These are moving fairly fast, which means you guys are putting in uh, lots of information. Rachel, hard to answer until we identify a preferred alternative. Pearson, thanks for answering that because I've I'm going back and forth, guys, from the chat as well as what you're putting here on the slide. So I love the fact we have a team to do this. Much of the foot and bike traffic occurs between Catulpa and State. The bike and sidewalk needs to at least be continuous from straight to Catulpa. All right, Hill Road intersection. Some people do not stop or honor the four-way stop. Rush hour traffic backs up there quite often. And looks as though we're kind of repeating. So at this point, it lets me know that many of you guys have participated. I'm seeing my number of participants increase to 16. Guys, if you're just now joining this meeting and you haven't had an opportunity to log on and you're wondering how to participate, we're gonna put the Menti link back in there, encourage you to log on there. Um, certainly something you're gonna to wanna to do as we go through this is be able to participate. 18 of you guys have given me feedback, Diana. In 20 years, I've not seen a problem other than speeding. Thank you so much. You reside there on the street. It's really important we get your perspective. No sidewalks on either side of the road leading to school and park off of Cotalpa. I've had many drivers be looking at their phones and not even see me as I'm out walking. Three-way stop at John's Landing with bull belts for visibility to accommodate pedestrians and low-stress bike route reduces speed by design. Okay, with that, we've got 18 of you guys who've given me your feedback. I thank you so much for participating. Again, that menti.com is there in the chat box. If you're just now joining us and you're wondering how to participate, guys, log on there and we'll capture what you have to say. 19 of you, which means more people are jumping on board. Concerned about inattentive drivers on Collister. Safe place to cross. We're, set, we're seeing a lot of insight about crossing sidewalks, but I'm also hearing a lot of people who appreciate the way it is now. With that being said, I want to go ahead and move us on to our next slide. 
Hey, Camus, you living on Collister, you've been there for 13 years. Uh, really important to hear your insight. Your speeding is an issue. Uh, being, bringing that up, we appreciate you for fe that feedback. Okay, guys, please tell us about any other location on Collister Drive that could use some improvements and why. So if there's something on Collister that has got your attention because you don't feel it's safe or you'd like to see enhancements, hey, if you could just go ahead and throw that into that slide, I'd really appreciate it, and I'll start reading them off. And again, if you guys have some you know, questions that it pertains to the slide, you can certainly use the chat box and I'll go back and forth as we go through this. Give it a moment to populate. Diana, there will always be poor driver. I have to watch out for any by defensive driving. Yes, unfortunately we cannot fix all bad behaviors. All right, we've got stuff coming into the slide. The left turn lane onto State and into the shopping center is always crowded. The whole length, I need to feel safe when walking in my neighborhood with my family. Lower the speed limit for the entire duration of Collister. After all, this is a neighborhood. Resident parking on Collister is important. I've also been here for a long time, almost 20 years now. I like the improvements with the neighborhood resources. Turning left onto State does continue to be difficult. The intersection of John Landing, Bloom, Clearview, and others have terrible visibility. Uh, the other areas of concern are above Hill Road, which we hope will be addressed at some point in time. Thanks for highlighting that. Ways to control the speed along Collister, especially coming down from Hill Road. Traffic in Hill and Collister, Collister could use a roundabout. I think traffic there is worse than any other place uh, on Collister. ACHD needs to fix the amount of time pedestrians have to cross. Give it a second for it to catch up. State Street, we need to maintain on street parking. Resident parking on Collister is important. Need to see some improvements there. Um, ways to control speed. And some areas of concern regarding intersection. So we've got about 12 of you guys have, who have participated. If you haven't yet participated, I know we've had about 19 of you guys participate in earlier uh, questions. So I want to encourage and nudge you one more time. So important that we get your guys' feedback. If not here, um, throw it in the chat box and we'll capture that as well. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. I do want to remind you, everybody who's participating in this evening's open house, there's another way for you to participate tomorrow. Give us a little bit more detail if you didn't think you got through tonight. Um, and that's going to be a landing page that we're going to send out via email, but we can only do that if you guys fill out the survey monkey. So we'll put that back up in the chat box as a link and keep reminding you guys that survey monkey is really important. So on to the question, what kind of ideas for enhancing calls to drive for all users would best fit the area? So what's that vision look like? What does that look like to you? What ideas do you have? So important we you guys throw those ideas at us because like I said, we're not coming into your neighborhood with the preconceived notion of what your street should look like. We want you guys to participate in this process, give us some ideas. It helps us as we move forward. All right, we'll give it a moment. It's evening. Everybody, it's much slower in the evening time with the survey. So sidewalk, slower vehicle traffic. So guys, we're doing a word map here. So the more of you guys that participate and use words that are important to you, the larger the word means more people are actually highlighting that as important. So we've got sidewalks. Sidewalks certainly rises to the occasion here. Slowing vehicle traffic, that too is also rising to the occasion. Bike lanes, looks as though several of you guys want to see bike lanes. We've got less parking, lower the speed limit, green colored bike lanes. These are great ideas, guys. Keep them coming. Slower speeds. Sidewalk. Sidewalk seems to be a hit. Um, it is the one that's rising to the largest word there. Visibility, bike lanes, increased visibility, lower speeds, less parking. Diana, I'm hearing that you would like to not see any additional sidewalks. Certainly appreciate your feedback. Stop drive-through from John's Landing. Make them go around to state. 
bike lanes, sidewalks, slower speeds, bowl bouts. I'm seeing bowl bouts is in there. Detached sidewalks. Hey, Candy, I'm going to answer your question there in the um, at the end. It would ACHG also do driveway aprons. Let's talk about that as we get to the end uh, when we have our open dialogue, and we'll take note of your question. Sidewalk, slower speeds, parking, green space, visually appealing, bold up bulb outs at cross streets. Brad, I'm hearing that you don't want to see any sidewalks on Collister. Thanks for your feedback. Uh, Sarah, you'd love to see something visual, something visually appealing. We've got parking and trees, narrow the lanes, marked crosswalks, sharrows for bikes. Uh, Brad, I'm seeing some concern drive through from John's Landing, make them go around to state. Jimmy, forget, forgot one, better landscaping at State and Collister, so a little bit of aesthetics added to this. Uh, Brad, we'll go ahead and address that later when we get to the open dialogue at the end of today's meeting. Sidewalk, slower speeds, bike lanes. All right, visually appealing. So we're going to take that time. We're going to move on over into the next question. Please tell us what solutions or options you would not want to see on Collister. So if there's something um, that you would rather not see and you want us to know about that, now is the chance to let us know. So go ahead and take this moment, fill it out, and we'll capture that as we move forward. Widening the right of way. You do not want to see any solutions we put forward that requires us to widen the right of way. Thank you. Speed bumps. No additional lanes. Keep it down to two lane street. Thank you so much. Again, just draw your attention if you're just joining us and you haven't logged on to Menti, um, we posted that back in the chat box. So if you're just getting on board with this meeting, want to encourage you to go to menti.com and fill that out. Diana, I'm hearing absolutely no sidewalks. No sidewalks unless it doesn't take away from parking and property. No sidewalks, bike lanes, widening the right of way or any tree removal. You don't want to see any more lanes or speed bumps. No roundabouts, no increased speed, increased street parking, additional lanes, stop lights at Catalpa or Hill. No street widening, no extra lanes, more concrete. You don't want to see any additional more concrete. Brad, I see your comment about no sidewalks. I really just want to highlight again, guys, we threw that survey monkey there in the chat box. If you haven't already done so, it's so important you guys fill that out so we can capture your information moving forward. I'm hearing no speed bumps. Narrow attached sidewalks would not be ideal. Diana, the street is busy. That is the way it is here. Speed bumps. More concrete, no flashing lights. Let's see. No speed bumps. Uh, Diana, you highlighted that there in the chat. Like, guys, I want to encourage you, if you're putting it in the chat, also stick it in the slide so everybody can see it as it comes through. I would not like to see parking eliminated. Would not like to see a street that visually looked like a runway, especially from the top of Collister looking south. I would not like to see sidewalks replay, replay, uh, replace the white shoulder. Bus stops, you don't want to see any bus stops. You don't want to see larger easements like between Bloom and John's Landing. Terrible design there for Collister Drive. No federally mandated designs. No on-street parking, no flashing lights. So it sounds as though we've got some of these stuff that is starting to repeat. Um, Brad, I'm hearing your concern about speed bumps are okay, just not in front of my home. I certainly <laughs> recognize that. Thank you for that feedback. Okay, if we have speed bumps, then we would hear jangling from every vehicle. Thank you, Diana, for pointing that out. All right, with that point, we're gonna go ahead and move on over to the next slide. What neighborhood goal, uh, values and goals should ACHG consider when looking at any changes to Collister? I keep reiterating this because this is what we're doing moving forward. Your values and your goals are important. What do you want your community and your neighborhood to look like? So take this opportunity to tell you what it is that you value about Collister you want it to continue or what values do you see? For instance, safety. One of you highlighted that safety is a value and a goal that you want to attain 
when we look at Hollister. And so I want to encourage you guys start growing out a word out there. We're going to capture it, but we want to know what's important. Connections important. Mobility options is important. Safety. Now back to the point. Remember, the larger the word means the more of you guys are repeating that word. So as each one of those words shift in size, it tells me how many of you guys are participating. Mobility, recreation, walkability, family, connection, trees. Guys, I'm seeing a lot of this. I'm seeing rural feel. So to you, it's important that you keep the rural feel of your neighborhood. Walkability, recreation, family accessibility, quiet. You like to keep your neighborhood quiet. Natural is important. And you, one word that keeps growing in size is safety. Although Diana did highlight in her chat, I feel sa very safe and I walk here all the time. Thank you, Brad. Uh, thank you, Diana and Brad. Leave it the way it is. Brad, we appreciate your feedback. Thanks for participating. Guys, throw that also in the word uh, mix in the slide as well if you haven't already done so. Family friendly, quiet, safety trees, walkability, rural fill. Rural fill is growing in size, but you know what is also growing is safety. Safety seems to be out there. Sarah Taylor, you highlight, oh, sorry, I missed what you said, but nonetheless, guys, follow along. Your neighbors are chatting with you back and forth in the chat box. You're certainly welcome to do so. Safety, family friendly, walkability, recreation. These are the things that seem very important to your neighborhood. Trees, trees is growing in size. Kristen, you highlighted you don't feel safe and I walk out there a lot. Thank you for that feedback. Family friendly, safety. Hey guys, as we start to have these conversations in chat, I do also want to remind everyone to be respectful of each other's comments, not uh, and that allow each other to voice your concerns. That's important. We need to capture that. But also, you guys are all neighbors, and so uh, take that into account as you're participating in the chat box. Family friendly, safety trees, guys. These are great feedback. Thank you so much for participating. And guys, also thank you for putting your feedback in the chat. It's so important that we also still have that dialogue. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump on over to the next slide. All right. For all of you who navigate this space, I want to see and understand what is the perfect Collister to you. So if you could visualize a perfect Collister drive, what does that look like? And it could be leave it alone. It's perfect as it is. Tell me that. If you want to see it more enhanced with pedestrian facilities, guys, tell me that. I need to hear all of this. So feel free to go ahead and throw that up in the slide, and we're going to capture that. 15, 15th Street from Hill to Fort. No cars, only horses. I like that, actually. <laughs> uh, no sidewalks, I'm hearing in the chat. I'm also hearing a lot of comments and concerns about kids walking and biking to Collister. Less walkers, less bikers. Sidewalks, speed reduced, well shaded, foliage, but tree canopies coming back. Trees, I'm hearing a lot, trees. Sidewalks, bike lanes, lower speed limit, just like Harrison Boulevard, 15th, 27th. Those are good examples. Thank you for highlighting those. Hearing somebody in the chat box, bold, lots of sidewalks. Well, guys, if you're bolding it there, bold it on the other side too. We really want to capture it on both sides. Safe pedestrian access for kids and families. Keep the trees and keep changes simple, but more importantly, safe. Safe for pedestrians, bikers. Keep the speed limit under 30 miles per hour or less. Harrison Boulevard is now 25. Less street parking, I'm sorry, less street parking, more bike and pedestrian friendly, slower speeds, quieter, safe for kids to make it to school or the park. I like the idea of a status street, award-winning, look to new ways of implementing complete streets that bring collectors back to a neighborhood street. I've seen sidewalks posted there twice. <laughs> Cows too, if you ride them. <laughs> Cows and horses. Well, we, you know, many of you feel you're in a rural community, a rural neighborhood. Cows and horses. Tanya, something about reduced speeds. Uh, most families and children have grown here and moved on to adulthood. I walk around Shirley Hill Road, never a problem. Calls your call, Catalpa, no problem. Thanks for your guys' feedback there. Safe to travel, narrow lanes, slower speeds. 
Pedestrian and bike improvements, especially from school park to state street, green space like Harrison. Harrison has sidewalks and trees. And something else I'm noticing is we've got a lot more people who jumped online. We've got 23 participants. So again, guys, if you're here and you're participating and you just joined, um, I want to encourage you to get to Menti and fill that out. Bike and pedestrian friendly, safe speed limits under 30. Guys, we're going to put that Menti link back on there if you're just now joining us so you can participate. But I also want to reiterate, you guys are going to have several more opportunities to give us feedback. So if you missed the first half of this meeting, uh, rest assured, we're going to capture your feedback as we go forward. Tanya, you live on Collister, is statistically safe. Thank you for that feedback. Ideal would be to keep property owners happy and have safer, oh, have safer, more inclusive streets for pedestrians of all ages, not just adults. Hmm, that's a challenge. I'd love to see a street like no other in Boise right now. Would love to add more life, landscaping, people, and shops, tree canopy. If I had to visualize it, probably Harrison or 15th are the closest to show design I love. Thank you guys. These are great examples. Crosswalks, less street parking, more bike and ped friendly. Well, it sounds as uh, from Diana, 30 miles per hour speed limit works, 35 on Hill Road is great. Cows too, if you were, oh, I, sorry, we're back to the cows and the horses. We got this. <laughs> so with that being said, it looks as though we have capped out on the number of people who are participating. Uh, 25 of you guys have provided your feedback. I so very much appreciate it. With that being said, oh, less peeps in general. Okay. Uh, with that being said, guys, we're going to move on to the next slide. Again, encourage you guys to keep the, uh, this coming. Um, keep the chat in the chat box going. It's so important. And then, Diana, we have teams of bikes fly by with no problem. Uh, yes, I have heard Collister is quite a popular uh, route for cyclists. So that concludes the survey question of tonight's virtual open house. I'm going to take this opportunity to go back through, answer some of these questions. But I also want to encourage you to take this opportunity to ask questions yourself. So here's how this is going to work. I'm not going to unmute all of you. As I anticipate, if I did that, you'd all start asking questions at one time. So this is how I'm going to ask that you engage. If you'd like to, if you want to be heard, I want to encourage you to raise your hand. The way you raise your hand is on the right hand side where it says participants, and I can manually unmute you. Or the other way in which you can participate is you can ask a question in the chat box, and I will go through those questions in the chat box. So there were several questions that were asked prior to just now. So if we could get somebody up there to identify which questions are still outstanding, I will answer those questions. All right, give it a second. Again, if you guys have questions, do we get uh, out of chat to speak? We're not going to open it up in, um, if you want to say something, you're certainly welcome. I can unmute you, it, preferred if you have a question, but it, I'm not going to unmute everyone. So Diana, do you want to take a moment just to say a few words? Okay, so one question I have, let's see. Looking for one, I think we had one. Um, I, I do recall one particular, okay, take John's landing away from Collister. Thank you, Brad, for bringing that up to him. So we cannot remove access from John's landing onto Collister. So if the intent of your question is, will we dead end John's landing? Um, no, we will not be dead ending John's landing. When the actual roads are platted is to allow people access. So one road doesn't belong to those who just reside on the road. The roads actually belong to the network. And so if the concern is the volume of traffic that is coming out of John's Landing um, and it's cut through, while Collister is a collector, and so it does serve the purpose to provide access to State Street. Um, so there's no other way for us to get folks to John's Landing um, you can go on the back end, I suspect, but Collister is the means in which the majority of those residents are going to access Collister, so we can't dead end uh, John's Landing. Dennis, what kind of budget do you have? Well, the budget, um, there is no set budget for enhancements for Collister. The whole intention of a concept study is for us to walk through what ideas we want to put forward and what ideas um, would be 
palatable with the residents who reside on there, those who use the street, and at the express permission and vote from commission, and at which point we will identify what the cost is for those, uh, those enhancements and what the budget will be. We have a question, would ACHD also do driveway aprons if they choose to do sidewalks? Yes, driveway aprons is part of sidewalk enhancement. Um, so if we do put in a sidewalk as it goes through a driveway, that'll be part of the design features that we have to take into, into account. The driveway aprons, however, are limited in depths into the property. They are there for where the sidewalk actually um, exists. What would be the timeline from improvements? That's Tom in the chat box. Um, Tom, what we anticipate is after we get through the concept and should the concept be adopted by the commission, we move into design and design is when we go out one more time, ask for folks to participate. And after design, we move into if necessary right of way and then construction. So from today to the day in which you're probably going to see if, if a project is adopted, true construction could be anywhere from four to five years, dependent on budget and dependent on the project itself. Um, we do have a hand up. Let me get to that really quick. Um, can you unmute that? And who is it? Tanya Ranger. Tanya, did you have a question? Hi. Hi. Yeah, you know, I, I think the big thing that I wanted to discuss was ACHD current setbacks with regard to sidewalks. So um, being someone that lives on Collister, um, I obviously use it daily. My kids and I walk up and down the street all the time. And um, those setbacks are incredibly invasive to property owners on um, who live on Collister. I mean, a ton of the tree canopy with these really large historic trees would be gone along with um, many wells. So, you know, I have a, a essentially just what, what does ACHD have to say about those kind of things? Because, you know, my garage would essentially be on the sidewalk and my neighbors would lose their walls. We'd lose our, our huge trees that make Collister in part what it is, just a beautiful, um, you know, beautiful street to enjoy. Um, so I'd like to know what your guys' feedback are on that. And if there was a way to decrease some of that traffic flow, um, I'd like to know if there are other options um, to help you know, bring, um, just bring Collister to the neighborhood street that it's meant to be, even as a collector. Thank you, Antonia, and some very good questions. So specifically for the setback, now that is a design feature. Um, we aren't there yet. Unfortunately, we need to go through this process to find out what that looks like. I do want to bring your attention to a project we just recently completed um, because we recognize and we are hearing loud and clear Tree canopy is important. Preservation of existing uh, property is important. And so what we wanna do is definitely make sure that all of those things are taken into account as we move this forward. And so if we come up with a concept and we bring it forward, we will have those conversations with property owners before we move any further along in the process itself. So as it pertains to setbacks, as it pertains to your garage, as it pertains to your tree canopies, those are all things that we will take into account. Now, I do want to give a reference, um, something that's really important. We just recently finished a, a similar concept as the one we were going through here. We did it with Kootenai Street. Same thing we heard from Kootenai was a lot of people did not want to see their property impacted. They didn't want us to remove any of the trees. Irrigation was a big factor. And right. we were able to go into Kootenai with the neighborhood and work through a process to where the proposed solution we put forward did not impact their right of way, limited and had very little impact to the tree canopy and preserved irrigation. So if we're able to move forward and you're gonna have more opportunities to tell us if we got this right, if we are able to move forward with ideas, staying within the existing footprint I'm hearing is extremely important to your neighborhood not right. having any impact on right away is extremely important to your neighborhood. So yes, Tanya, thank you so much for bringing those to our attention. We're here. We're hearing you loud and clear. Setbacks are an issue. Tree canopy is an issue. And more importantly, preserving your space and your right away is an issue. Thanks um, very much. Second, oh wait, I think you had another question. What was your second question? Oh yeah, um, thank you. Uh, my second question is, is there a way to decrease some of the traffic flow on Collister, um, for example, 
we, I know that we're an approved route for large trucks um, to get to their construction sites. So if there was a way to decrease some of that traffic, maybe decrease the speed limit, um, don't love speed bumps, but maybe that could be an idea. Um, and, and, you know, certain certain things like that um, to sort of allow culture to be the collective road, the collector road that it is, but yet be a neighborhood where where neighbors live and enjoy their space um, nonetheless. Yes, Tanya, it's what that is what we call traffic calming. Traffic calming has two purposes. It's to either address the volumes or to reduce the speeds. For us to actually do traffic calming, it oftentimes requires us to to reconstruct or reevaluate the road with raised elements or any type of infrastructure enhancement. And so as we go through this process, because we heard um, from several of you, speeds and volumes is of concern. Uh, we will also examine options for traffic calming. And we always have to be careful when we talk about traffic calming because what works for Collister to reduce the volumes potentially could push those cars somewhere else. And so as we examine opportunities to enhance Collister, we also have to look and see what that impact is going to look like for all the other streets along there. And so we want to be neighborly and we want to recognize that we're going to improve Collister to make it safe and address the volumes and address the speeds and allow people to walk. But we also have to be neighborly to those other streets adjacent to, um, to Collister. And so, Tanya, those are really good Good, good questions, ones we're gonna take into consideration as we move forward, and actually ones we were successful in addressing with Kootenai, which, you know, in the case, Kootenai and Collister are pretty darn similar um, in purpose in their neighborhood. So we had several questions, I'm gonna go back. Um, let's see, will, will they do at night? What construction happens to these improvements, the orange coast flaggers? You know, that is a question that uh, really is, out, is an outlying question. For us right now, we're not even there yet. We got to find out if we have a solution. Let's start there. If we can work through a solution, identify what's going to work for you guys, then I think that's going to be more important. Um, but Deb, I hear your point about construction. Yes, it is uncomfortable for everyone. Uh, let's talk about that when we get closer. Other questions? Uh, would walking space would be improved if open dishes were piped? Um, open ditches oftentimes uh, is somebody's irrigation, so we have to take that into consideration. Um, also, what space we're working within. So um, again, we're heard loud and clear, stay within the existing footprint, don't touch our right of way, um, keep our trees. Is there a way to create a barrier between road and setbacks to help protect walkers? Um, you, we can do detached sidewalks if space allows, but these are all things we're going to look into. So there is now is Collister the right uh, candidate for some of these treatments? We don't know yet. I could compromise not having sidewalks if traffic calming and lower speeds were prioritized. Thank you, Jimmy. I was trying to get to the question. I'd love to see more about Kootenai. Jeremiah and Jill, we put that link in there. So go take a look. There's the landing page. Um, for Kootenai Streets Project. And I think if you have questions about Kootenai, I so happen to have been the project manager on the concept for Kootenai. So I'd be happy to talk to you about how we went about it. Would you take my tree at 4818? That would be crazy. I would need to find out before saying yes to any changes. I hear you. Trees are important, believe me. And you know what, let's talk. You have my contact name and number is going to be put in the chat box. Hey, I'll come out there and take a look at your tree and um, let's talk about preserving that space. I know I recognize that's important to you. Um, we can't, this link for the approved Kootenai concept, who maintains sidewalk from snow, weeds, et cetera. No to speed bumps, they make a lot of noise. The quicker the truck maintenance trucks, schools, city buses, I'm not sure where the question is. Who maintains sidewalks from snow and weeds? That would be ACHD. Um, no, actually, side. I'm sorry, for sidewalks, that is actually the property owners. Um, they are responsible for the sidewalks out front of their houses. I stand corrected. Um, let's see, extruded curbs. If we end up with sidewalks, there can't be a standard curb and gutter. It needs to be rolled curb. No mailboxes, so on and so forth. Thank you for your comments. Guys, I'm scrolling through these trying to capture the questions. Okay, I'm not showing any additional questions. We've gone through all of them. I see a lot of statements, a lot of comments. Those are very much important. 
So I hear a lot about concerns. If you had specific concerns really that pertain to your, uh, your property, I would love to come and talk to you about those. I would love to actually have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. I can't make any guarantees to anything because I cannot see your property. Um, this is a iterative process. This isn't the first time we're gonna come out and engage with you. We're gonna be out here a second time. Um, Diana, it seems you have already made a decision. I'm not sure what decision we've already made. Nope, there is no decision. The decision is we're going to engage with you guys to identify what would be appropriate for your street. Um, Pierce Park has an example of extruded curb without sidewalks for reference. Sarah, thanks so much for putting that point and that comment out there. And so I do want to encourage you guys to continue to participate in this process. After tonight's comments, after your feedback, we're going to take all of this back. We're going to sit through and look through it and find out if there are options available to bring forward for consideration. Tanya, are traffic calming efforts a separate issue from sidewalk install? Nope. Everything we're looking at, guys, we're looking at traffic calming, we're looking at sidewalks, we're looking at pedestrian facilities, we're looking at nothing. If nothing is what we hear is important and you guys want no change, and then that, that will be also what we examine. So it's so important that you guys participate in this process. I've heard from several of you, um, you want to see enhancements, and then I've heard from several of you, you want nothing to be done. And so your input, your input is valuable. Thank you for participating. My contact information is up there. You've got my email, you've got my phone number. If I didn't answer your questions or if I wasn't clear enough, I wanna encourage you guys to continue to get in touch with me. I'll be back out here in September with some ideas moving forward and we encourage you guys to continue to participate. Uh, Survey Monkey link is back up there. Guys, again, you need to go fill out that Survey Monkey so we can capture your information. We're gonna invite you to participate in a survey that will come release tomorrow. If you didn't feel like you had enough time or we didn't capture what you had to say, by all means, log on to the link tomorrow, participate again, give us your feedback. Um, Sarah, my daughter was here, she would vote for a center lane of water like a stream. So maybe that's an innovative solution <laughs> to investigate for drainage. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. You know, guys, the thing about projects like this is they're irritative, irrit sorry, they're irritative, I can't say the word. I'm going to be here a lot. I'm gonna to continue to have this dialogue. I'm gonna to continue to communicate with you and we're gonna get through this process and hopefully in the end, we'll come up with the solution that will meet your neighborhood's needs. But we recognize your neighborhood needs, not everybody feels the same way and we need to respect one another as we go through this process. And when we come out the end, we hope to bring something to the commission that either they can support and the neighborhood could support but the ultimate decision rests with your elected officials. The ultimate decision uh, will be up to them. And the only thing in which we can do is work through this process to find solutions that would meet the need of your neighborhood and then work through the next process. So I'll be back out here in uh, September with some ideas, with your comments, and I look forward to engaging with you guys into the future. In the meantime, my contact information is in there. Call me, email me. If you want me on your street and you need to talk to me on your doorstep, I'd be more than happy to come out. So with that being said, you guys have a wonderful evening. Um, take care, and it's been a pleasure. Bye, guys.